Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the much anticipated Hubson Xeno. It is priced like a Spark but has the features of a Mavic and this video is going to be in 4K because this drone has the capabilities of filming video in 4K. So let's get it out of the box and take a closer look at it. So this model is direct from Hubson and you can buy it off their website and if you do that you'll get the correct charging plug for your country. So let's get the box open here and see what we've got inside. So the first thing I'm seeing is a quick start guide. Now I just want to mention that at the making of this video there is no official manual. All we have is a quick start guide. I know a lot of people can get frustrated saying oh you should have read the manual properly but you know this is a very early version and all there is is as a quick start guide so you know we'll be finding some things along the way as I take a look at this unit so let's take it out of the box we have got all of these little compartments here and then this is the drone itself and we have got some cardboard here that is just keeping the props in line. This is something that I always thought companies have missed a trick with really with these folding drones is that the props just sort of move about. You know, if we compare it to the Mavic Pro, which is here, you can see it's actually a little bit shorter in length than the Mavic but I think it is just a little bit wider. Yeah, the props just move around and I always thought how easy would it to be to just have some clips just to have the props stay in place in storage. Sadly, it looks like this one is just for storing in the box as well and actually doesn't have a function. So I'm going to take all of these off here. So now those are off, we need to unfold the arms and there is a way to do it. You have to unfold the front arms first and they click into place there. Be very careful not to leave them out flat like that. I did do some testing to see if it would fly like that, but it wasn't very stable. So make sure that it comes fully out like that. If you try and do it the other way around, this stand here gets in the way and you can't pull the front arm out so you have to do the front arms first so let's do that and then the back arms and then as you can see at the front we have got a protector for the camera which is really nice actually just a couple of clips there and then that just comes apart like that and then we have got the camera we have got a lens protector make sure that you take that off otherwise your video might be fuzzy and the gimbal reminds me of the Mavic Air actually you know it seems very similar and we'll have to see what the quality is like and then if we have a look around the side here we have got a USB connector and that is for updating the firmware and then this is where your micro SD card goes It does not come with one while well, this one hasn't anyways And you're going to need a pretty fast micro SD card for 4k video And then at the back we have got the battery We have got two buttons that press in there And it is a 3000 milliamp battery apparently you will get a 23 minute flight time and then we've got the on button at the back there the propellers are screwed in and i do believe we have a screwdriver in here somewhere and some spare propellers as well but you know they don't just twist off so if you do have to switch out a propeller then you know it's not so straightforward 
you need a screwdriver to do it. Underneath we have got some landing feet, but what you will notice with this copter is we don't have any optical flow, we don't have any sonar, and we don't have any object avoidance. And I think that is where the price has been cut compared to the Mavic. So we'll have to see what its position hold is like, because of course, DJI use all of that to get a rock steady, position hold so we'll have to see what this one is like with it just using GPS. We do have some LEDs underneath here and they have various indicators which it does explain actually in the manual and then we have got some stickers on here and it just basically says please extend the arms fully there you could remove those if you want to, but I'm gonna leave them on just to remind me. So let's have a look what else we have got in the box. So there's nothing in there. And then we have got the remote controller here. Now it's not as high quality as the Mavic, but I don't think we should be comparing this to the Mavic because as I say, it is spark priced. But yeah, the gimbals, they do feel sort of like Xbox gimbal, sort of more toy grade rather than proper gimbals. We have got these antennas here and it is using 2.4 gigahertz. One thing that I do really like about this though, and I think this is actually better than DJI, is how your phone goes in here because I find DJI really awkward to get your phone in there. So this stretches out and as you can see, stretches out quite far so you could probably fit a small tablet in there. This has got a built-in battery and I think it's 2,600 milliamp, yeah, 3.7 volts, so 1S. That charges off the side here. And then we have got our controls, so we have got our gimbal controller there, we can take a photo there, we can start and stop video recording there. We've got return to home, which is a long press. We have got the power button, which is a long press again, and then we've got an automatic takeoff and land button. It is pretty straightforward. So that is that box empty, and then we have this last one, which has got spare parts written on it. There's the screwdriver, and we've got a little safety thing so you don't stab yourself, but that is for replacing the props and then we have got some spare propellers in there then we have got another compartment in here we have got a usb cable and then we have got the charger and as i say as this has come direct from hubson it's a uk charger but it's kind of like a toy grade charger in that you know we just have got some leds on there this plugs in here like so and then we've got like a balance port that just plugs in there. And then we've got a little cap on the end there and we've got some pins. And then if I just take the battery out like that, then that just slots onto there. Now it does take 180 minutes to charge. So quite a long time to charge, but if we get a decent flight time, then it'll be worth it. I do believe the batteries are going to be very cheap. So, you know, that's a good thing. You might want to get a couple more of those if you are interested in this model. And lastly, we have got this USB adapter, which is an iOS adapter. And at the making of this video, the Android app isn't ready yet, but I'm told by the time that this is released, the Android app will be ready on the Play Store. So, just like DJI, this plugs into the side here where it also charges and then this goes into your iOS device or Android device and then your phone goes in there. You can select mode one and mode two. Oh, we also have got a sport mode here and a normal mode here as well. 
Now, as far as I can tell, you cannot turn off GPS mode, so there's no sort of attitude mode. I would have liked to have seen that, and I will definitely be feeding it back to arm the copter, it is both sticks out like that. Okay, so next let's take a look at the app. And as I say, the making of this video, the Android app isn't ready yet. And I think the iOS app is a little bit buggy as well, but as I say, this is a very early version and I'm hoping that there'll be some instructions that can explain some of these things. Now I haven't got the drone or the controller turned on at the moment, but let's go into the app and first of all we'll get a two second ad for the Xeno even though we have it already. And I'm going to enter the device here and enter main interface. And what you get is you get sticks on the screen. And you'll see I'll be able to move them here. However, there is no way to control the drone just from using the mobile. I think this was their original idea and they've left the function in there, but you can't actually use it. So what happens is when you turn the drone on, these sticks disappear. So I'll do that. In fact, what I'll do is I will exit the app and we will start again because it does actually tell you how to bind the drone and there's a little bit of a bug there as well. So if I go into enter device there, it says how to pair devices and it says unfold the arms and then if we do next step, what you have to do is press the button on the drone. So if we do next step there and then it says here that we have to plug the phone into the cable and you also have to turn on the controller at this point as well and then if we go to next step it says here that we have to enter the settings interface and then tap the controls tab make sure that the transmitter connection is set to Wi-Fi and not Bluetooth I'm not sure what this Bluetooth thing is maybe it's a future thing that they're going to add and it says then select relay to connection with the aircraft to enter the connection settings page below figure and then it says refresh the Wi-Fi and then you'll see Hubson etc. So let's just do finish tutorial and let's do all of that. So I'm going to turn the drone on here. You can see we've got the sticks that have still appeared. So it's a long press of the button to turn the drone on and then a long press on the controller and I will get a beep and it'll take a couple of seconds for everything to pair up and we should see a picture that comes onto the phone. It says not connected at the moment but it, as I say it's gonna take you know just a few seconds. So can you see those controls have now disappeared. It says not connected but in a minute, there we go, we'll get a picture. Now what is strange is I can actually control the gimbal here. But if I go into the settings up the top here and then go into that menu that they talked about, so it says set transmitter and aircraft connection, so I'm going to select that and then Hubson should show up. So I'm going to press Hubson and then connect. We get a strange message, something about resetting the drone and using a booster for the first time. Now I don't know if this is something that they are planning for the future. There's actually some pins underneath the controller and I don't know if the idea is to maybe use a Wi-Fi booster in the future, but yeah, I'm getting that message at the moment. And I think the range is a, 
a thousand meters, so a kilometer at the moment. It doesn't detail what the height limit is. However, in the waypoints, it says 500. I'm guessing that's 500 meters. But anyways, what's strange is if we go back to the first option there, it says bind aircraft to current device, and then it says not bounded. So if I go into there, it says bind aircraft to current device. You must bind your current mobile device to the aircraft so that other mobile devices cannot connect to the aircraft unless you reboot the aircraft. Again, I think this is some legacy stuff about other mobiles connecting to the Xeno, but I don't think that function is there, so it's very strange. So you kind of have to bind it twice, and then it does this GPS accuracy test, which is probably not going to pass because I'm indoors. I think you need six satellites in order for it to actually take off, although it says we've got 15 in here. So the distance between the mobile device and the aircraft is 13 meters. It's not. It's just a couple of inches. So it's probably going to fail this test. As I say, probably because I'm indoors and it's given a warning there to say that we probably shouldn't fly but that is fine but now we are bound to the aircraft so yeah it seems like there are some bugs still with this but anyways let's take a look at some of those other options in there so you can see aircraft model Xeno waypoint settings now it says waypoint altitude 30 and it doesn't say meters or feet or whatever i'm going to guess it's meters because if we come out of there everything in the bottom is in meters there so waypoint settings so you can see max altitude 500 again i'm going to think that is meters max flight route distance a kilometer because they say that is what the range is and then you know the radius etc I'm not sure I'm going to be checking out waypoints. I'm never a fan of these autonomous flights because, you know, it just seems strange to me when you can fly it yourself. I guess the idea is that, you know, it's going to fly smoother because, you know, it's not you on the sticks or whatever. But, you know, I've never been comfortable with that. So let's just go back into there. GPS accuracy test is a strange one. It's already done it. It's not going to work indoors, but it's going to ask me to do it outside. By the way, the first time you boot this up as well, it will ask you to do a compass calibration. And that's fairly straightforward there. And then we've got the firmware and stuff like that and the gimbal status. So... Can you see there, virtual joysticks stay on the screen? It's set as yes, but of course they're not there. So again, I just think it's something that they were thinking with the app that's just not quite there yet. So where were we? So I might as well have that off. Joystick mode, mode one, because I fly mode one, you're probably gonna be mode two. And then we've got virtual joystick sensitivity. It won't let me touch that. It only lets me touch that when the drone is turned off. Again, I think, you know, that is some legacy stuff that they were working on that they just haven't removed from the app. So if we go controller here, it says transmitter model, and then you've got the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. I don't know if the Bluetooth is maybe something for the future, maybe for updating firmware or something like that. I don't know. And then we've got the hardware version, and then we've got the firmware version as well. So this one here, so map calibration is a strange one as well. I have asked them what it is. It's currently set to no, but I'll show you what it does or what I think it does. And then it says always show the aircraft's current location at the center of the map. I've got that as no, but you know, you can change that. Waypoint and mission route sampling accuracy. You would think that should be maximum. I don't know why we've got an option to change that. And then map mode, we can have satellite, hybrid or standard. So the satellite doesn't tell you like street names and things like that. The hybrid shows you street names and uh, also the satellite and then standard is just the map view and you can change that in the map view as well. We have got 
automatic screen rotation. I've got that set to no. All that is is if you turn the controller upside down, it'll flip the app around. You don't really want that. FPV is a strange one. When you've got it on, it'll allow you to control the gimbal. When you've got it off, then you can't control the gimbal and that's all that does. Horizontal calibration calibrates the gyro, so you know you can put the copter level on the ground and it will calibrate. And then we've got the compass calibration here, which is you know your usual thing. So, anyways, I've exited out of that because you really want to be doing that outdoors. But what else have we got here? So, yeah we have got the gimbal calibration as well, although the gimbal stays level really well on this cocked. And then we've got app version as well. So I'm gonna exit out of that. So that's all of the settings there. We've got motor locked at the top. When you arm it, that'll change the GPS mode there. Then we've got whether the motors are spinning. We have got our signal strength and then our number of satellites our battery and the copter currently a hundred percent and then we have got the copters well it lo looks like it should be yeah that that's the the stick controls there i thought it was actually the angle of the copter but no it's the stick controls don't know why you'd need that we have got a headless function here i don't like headless mode at all and it's far too close to the settings for me. I don't like that. Uh, you can actually alter the gimbal position from the screen down here, but this is a big one. There's no camera controls at all. You are stuck with 4K video and it also saves a 480p version of it as well. So the 4K, so 2160p at 44 megabit and then it saves a 480p version of it at 2 megabit you can't change any settings whatsoever and yet yeah, that is how you go into the record function there and the picture all the picture does is take a screen grab of the video so you might as well just not take pictures i would say and maybe you know use the screen grab on the computer or something so that's a little bit disappointing it doesn't do raw or anything like that and at the moment it's not letting me press this icon at the bottom here and i can't seem to access any of the photos or the pictures that are stored on the sd card on the drone from the phone um if we go back home here and then go into the settings it looks like that that option should be there but everything is just blank so again i just want to say you know this is an early version but you know that isn't working at the moment so if i go back in there and then enter the device and then enter it all again i'm probably gonna have to bind it again Anyways, uh, yeah, so we've got this map view at the top there and you can zoom in and zoom out and then we've got the options again for the satellites. Now, this is that map calibration thing. It says long press to calibrate the map, but if I just long press it, what it does is it can you say it says are you sure you want to calibrate map coordinates press ok and it moves the arrow up there i really don't know what that does and i'm going to turn it off because that looks to me like the copter's in the middle of the field now when it's not it's inside so yeah that's very odd i do like though how you can still see the camera in the corner there so if i just go uh, back to that view then we've got this copter icon here so these are all of our different settings we have got normal mode then waypoint mode which of course you have to be flying in in order to do i think so uh, if i just select that oh no there you go so yeah we can you know draw i think uh, a waypoint thing on there let me try and 
do that. Will it let me do it there? And then you can delete that as well. Okay, and then we've got point of interest as well. So I can just select that there and it'll probably fly around a point of interest or something. I don't know. None of these features I find very useful, to be honest. I think we also got mission history up the side here as well. But if, yeah, if I go back into there, we've got orbit mode. And again, it's doing this weird thing where it has to do a GPS accuracy test. And, you know, if it fails that, then it won't let you do that. But, uh, yeah, so we've got orbit mode there will it do i need to go back into there now it says i need to take off first so yeah uh follow me mode i've tried this already and the follow me mode i think it follows the gps of your phone and it's very slow so i would use the active track much better you draw a box around yourself and it follows you so yeah that one is much better. Uh, creative video. So we've got, <laughs> there's some grayed out options, so you can't use those yet. But panorama shot, all that does is it makes a your movement in the video very smooth. So it's it's not like a panoramic picture, it's just video. So uh, yeah, not that useful, I don't think. And then we've got... Uh, this line mode which we need to take off and then VR mode if you want to do VR goggles and that is pretty much the app I think how do I get out of that one are they they go press exit by the way the app does have a flight logger so if you run into issues and have a flyaway for example you can go in and check out what happened in the flight and I don't know if Hubson offer this same service but with DJI if you can prove that you did nothing wrong and the aircraft flew away then they might cover you under warranty. The way that you can download these flight logs at the making of this video is actually through iTunes. Okay so let's see what this guy is made of. I'm gonna press the automatic takeoff button which I have to hold down and it's taken off on its own. So the first thing I'm interested in is to see what the GPS hold is like because we do not have optical flow. Now, unfortunately, it's quite windy here today, but if you're gonna release a cop to this time of year, then you're gonna be suffering wind while flying it, I think. But you know what? That is staying pretty solid, I have to say. Let's see what it's doing to the video. The video looks pretty rock solid as well, which is good. So let's fly it around, see what the controls are like. Give it a bit of throttle and see how it moves around while it flies. have a look what the video is like looks pretty good so this is just normal mode that I'm in here so I've flown it around a little bit let's bring it back and let's just see again what the hover is like it isn't as good as a copter that has optical flow when it comes to its hold. It does kind of drift a little bit, kind of loiters, which does make me worry when it's windy. Let's tilt the camera down a little bit and have a look. So what I'm going to do, it's pointed at me and I'm just going to leave it there and let's see what happens. Let's see if we've got any drift or anything like that. If I look at the 
camera that's on my head, you'll see the clouds move and you'll see how windy it is. It is extremely windy, but actually these trees here, they are sort of covering that up a little bit. So I am a little bit scared to go higher, but that doesn't look too bad. So what I'm gonna do is take this steady opportunity to have a go at the active track. So let's go into there and follow me mode and then active track. So it says I've got to draw a box around me. So I'm gonna press understood, draw a box around me like so. And then I have to press go. And then if I walk about, and it should follow me. What have we got here? The CPU of the mobile device is fully loaded. It's recommended to turn off this feature. <laughs> yeah, this is a, an old phone. It's an iPhone 6 Plus. But uh, seems to be working okay. It may be a little bit jittery on the playback. And that's quite interesting because I didn't get that message last time I flew it. But there you go. And for me, this is the best follow me mode, I think. Because when I tried the follow me mode that relies on the GPS, I think of the phone, it was a little bit slow. But I'm going to stop this because it's recommending me to stop it. I am screen recording at the same time, so, you know, that could be the reason. But let's go into the follow me mode and try the other one. You see there, mobile device, GPS strength, strong. So execute immediately. Uh, and then, so what, I can hide that can I and now it should follow but there's always a delay yeah I've always found this I don't I don't trust this at all can you see it's not getting me in shot it does eventually catch up if I just sort of leave it there no I'm gonna stop that mode don't use that mode guys the active track is very good I would say I think it's as good as DJI in that respect and you know all of these other options that we've got I don't use any of these at all certainly not the line fly mode or the waypoint mode or anything like that I'm gonna bring the copter down a little bit just so that we can get a nice shot of it as you can see it does move around a little bit And I'm sure, you know, everyone will notice that it looks just like the Mavic, which I think is interesting for Hudson because Hudson usually innovators. But this time, you cannot deny this looks just like the Mavic. Alrighty, well, I'm a little bit scared of taking it higher because of the, the wind. But let's have a go are doing that and then we'll just keep it in line of sight because you know if it gets into trouble we can't turn the GPS off let's let's actually uh, turn it away from the Sun as well this time of year the Sun is very low on the horizon and yeah it does look to me like it's drifting backwards a little bit but I have to say the video is pretty nice I don't think it's quite on par with the me or the DJI products that is really getting blown around and we are only up 17 meters there and with it not having optical flow or any of that and these clouds <laughs> they're moving so fast yeah 
it says you know 20 mile per hour plus winds today so unfortunately I I don't really feel confident taking it really high I'm gonna go a little bit higher and we'll keep it in line of sight and I'm just a little bit worried about the wind carrying it away really because you know we do have GPS on there but yeah that is that is definitely flying backwards if the limited angle that these copters have is less than what the strength of the wind is then it can still blow the copter away which is why DJI give you a little warning to say that it's a little bit windy and you probably shouldn't be flying <laughs> See if I can just have a look at the trees here yet. Yeah. We're not very high up at all, I'm afraid, but uh, yeah, I can definitely see it moving around with the wind. So, you know, it could be some time until we get a day where it's calm enough for me to go really high up. But uh, yeah, this one definitely moving around with the wind I could see so I think that's as high up as I'm prepared to go and I think you know for beginners as well I would say do the same yeah I've got full forward movement in there this does have a sport mode so maybe we could try that but really what you want to be comfortable with with these GPS copters is that, you know, the idea, especially with DJI, is that you don't want to be flying it. You don't want to be having to look at it line of sight. And with this one, now that it's down low and it's protected by the trees, its hover is just fantastic. But up there, all over the place, and... I actually flew the Xiaomi Mi in incredibly strong winds and I think because of its sensors and everything that stayed up and didn't move so you know when you're looking at the price of this in the Mi I think it's a tough one because the Mi is huge but I think it does better with the stability and you know it it has a slightly better camera, I think, as well. Just told me that we've got 40% uh, battery left. You can't change any of the battery warnings. How long have we been flying for here? I think it says 14 minutes, but uh, yeah, I think I did have the camera going uh, before I started flying, so might be a little bit less than that. And it is eight degrees today, so, you know, pretty cold. Anyways, I'm going into sport mode here, and let's just see what speed we can get, because it does tell us the speed. I think it tells us the speed. Yeah, speed there. So let's go up on the throttle a little bit and go fully forward. Six meters per second. Yeah, about six meters per second, <laughs> but Again, it's it's windy, and uh, yeah, so that might not be telling us a whole lot. Six meters per second, yeah. Same in the other direction, so about the same. You'll see as well when, when I sort of do a turn, it sort of wobbles a little bit, and you know, takes a, a little bit of time to compose itself and again other copters that have these other sensors they're better at leveling out so that's all I will say but you know they are working to a price with this one right what are we doing there 35% battery let's uh, shall we check out how accurate the return home is so let's fly it over to those trees over there. Uh, 
Okay, and then I'm gonna let go. And I'm looking at it line of sight, and yeah, I, I can see it moving to the side just a little bit there. So there's no object avoidance either. So let's long press the return home button and see what happens. So it's lifting up. Is it gonna turn around? It is turning around. Wow, it is a misty day today as well. Can I still control the gimbal? I'm just gonna loop down so that it's not washed out. And it is coming back. It took off from that helipad there, but again, it's not taking a photo when it takes off like DJI. So it's not gonna land exactly on the pad. I think it's a long press again to cancel the return home, but this is this is where it's landing against where it took off. And I long pressed the button there, but it actually didn't stop it. So it's gone nicely in the grass and so has the camera. The gimbal does have protection on it though, I should say. So how much battery have we got left? That was 17 minutes there, so yeah, the, the flight time, I would say, pretty accurate and pretty impressive considering, you know, the time of year and how cold it is and stuff. So, let's just have a look if we got a load of grass on the camera. Actually, I don't think it's too bad, but I'm going to give it a little wipe. Yeah, another problem with this thing being white as well is that if it does go in the grass, the entire thing becomes green. So 30% battery. Let's take off again. And uh, yeah, so let's conclude this thing really. So yeah, definitely think the fact that it doesn't have optical flow. You know, there are some toys that have optical flow these days, you know? So it would have been nice to see some of that on there. And the 4K image is very good, but I think the Xiaomi Mi drone is better, and of course DJI is better, but it's still not bad. So I think you have to make the choice at this price range, you know? Do you want a folding drone that, you know, can fit easily in your bag? Or do you want a bigger drone that is the size of, you know, or bigger than a Phantom 4, but it's more stable, it's got a better hold, but it's not as portable. And, you know, on windy days, I would say forget going up high because I think the wind is just going to push it back. However, I do like the app. I think in my sort of prototype testing, I said the app was flawless and it never really crashes, but maybe flawless isn't quite the right word because, you know, there are those sticks that are on there, but I'm sure, you know, Hubson are gonna be updating the app, you know, they're very good at stuff like that. So our battery doing here? 25%. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best day, really, for getting video footage off this thing because the sun is low on the horizon and it's misty. So if you want to go and check out the video that I did when I was testing the prototype of this thing, you'll probably see better footage. But I'm completely hands off here and I've taken it up. We are at 22 meters and that's really, it's, <laughs> that, that's the, the tree height, any higher than that. And the wind starts to push it and it gets a little bit scary because you know, you can't turn the GPS off. The only thing you can do 
it's come down on the throttle so uh, yeah I'm afraid today we are not going to be going up as high as it possibly can but for me drones aren't about going up as high as you can it's about getting aerial shots so that you can see the ground and see things on the ground if you go up too high you just lose resolution and things just become dots yeah it's it, it's getting pushed around by the wind it's a shame really but uh, I'll try and find a better day look at that mist I'll try and find a better day where we can really take it up high just have a pan around here and it's it's staying in its position but it it more sort of loiters like the the old Pixhawk and APM models that also you know didn't have the you know modern day sensors and things so it flies a bit like that but it still flies okay we've got no toilet bowling which is good if you're not aware of what toilet bowling is it's it's where the compass gets interference and the thing starts to move around it's not done that whatsoever we've got some lights flashing on the back probably to say that you know the battery is getting low battery level is only 20 percent i do believe that it will fly back and land itself when the battery gets too low but something that i like about the other models such as the Mi and the DJI is they kind of look like they aren't a drone when they're flying you know the footage it looks like a crane but this one with it moving around just a little bit you know you can tell that it's a drone just look at that there just <laughs> with a, a gust of wind 20 percent all right let's just uh let's just fly it around until the battery runs out in sport mode here so shouldn't take too long for it to do that i would like to see more options i'd like to see more camera options you know people like to mess around with things like the iso and the shutter speed it would be nice to see more picture options because it just seems to be a screen grab of the video which you know anyone can do wonder actually if we can take a photo whilst it is also recording and if that's what it does i'm going to press the button see if anything happens pressing the button and nothing's happening aircraft has been forced to return according to low battery and it looks like it's just gonna land where it was i'm gonna try and get it on its landing pad yeah i did it <laughs> so start the recording that was actually yeah around about 23 minutes i think so there you go that is my review of the hubson xeno i think what they have managed for the price is pretty incredible but i have the xiaomi mi in the background there and they've also got a copter coming out but it's not a 4k copter so like i say you have this or the me at that price i think i prefer the me but this is definitely a decent copter from hubson and i will link it in the below if you wish to get one and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers